truth and life for urban ministry, where faith and activism meet. Here's your host, Brother Leon, prophet to the streets and pastor to the people. What's going on? I want to welcome you to Truth in Life Urban Ministry Podcast. Hey guys, we are going to be on Facebook Live. I am your pastor, Pastor Leon Temple. So I'm telling you, meet us at 930 because, hey, we have a message for you today. The power of I am. Because I want you guys to understand and know that there is power in you saying I am and recognizing I am. Hey, good morning. What's going on, good people? This is your pastor, Pastor Leon Temple, this morning. I want to welcome you to Truth and Life Urban Ministry. And so, guys, we have a powerful message for you this morning. I just want to thank God this morning for everything, man, that he has done, everything, man, that he has brought us through. Because I'm going to tell you right now, man, we are in the midst of, whew, we're in the midst of transition, And the one thing I want you guys to understand and know is this, is that God, he is with us. Life is prophetic. Life is seasonal. But the one thing that I love about God is this, is that he is always constant and he always is moving. He always has a word for us. He always gives us wisdom and revelation for the season. So with that being said, guys, again, I want to welcome you this morning to Truth and Life Urban Ministry. I am your pastor, Prophet Leon Temple. So we're going to have a powerful message this morning. I hope you enjoyed last week's message. I want to encourage you guys to uh, go to the podcast. We now have a, a Truth and Life Urban Ministry podcast, which can be heard on iTunes as well as Spotify. So that podcast is going to be different from the Brother Leon Show, if you know me from the Brother Leon Show. That podcast is going to incorporate all of our Sunday messages as well as our Bible studies. So we're going to be doing Bible studies on Thursdays. The messages that we do here on Facebook Live will be in audio form. So if you missed the message, you can go back, replay it on the podcast. So I want you guys to uh, like, share, and subscribe Truth and Life Urban Ministry Podcast. It is on iTunes as well as Spotify. And we have some other platforms that it's going to be on as well. So um, when I get that, I'm definitely going to let you guys know. So on the podcast, you can see, you can hear what our vision is. You can see what it is and you can hear what it is on the podcast. And we're going to be doing our core values. We are also going to be doing our mission statement as well. Because the one thing I want you guys to understand and know is that this church is a church that is about faith and activism. That's what Truth and Life Urban Ministry is, a place where faith and activism meet. So, you know, there's a lot of things that is happening in our community and God, you know, he has given us a word for those things. And so the one thing is this, that God told me, he said, hey, I want you to create a space and a place where faith and activism meet because there has been a great divide when it came to the church as well as activism. When you're dealing with urban communities, when you're dealing with marginalized communities. So we're going to address those problems. God is going to give us wisdom and revelation so that we can see that there is deliverance, that there is salvation as well. So with that being said, like we always say, hey, I am who I am and I will not apologize for who I am because God has made me fearfully and wonderfully and I will not apologize for walking in my truth. Say that with me this morning. I will not apologize for walking in my truth because the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Don't apologize for who you are. Don't apologize how God made you. Because the one thing is this, is that, hey, God ain't called you to dumb yourself down. God ain't called you to dilute you. He want to use you as you are. And if you start diluting yourself, you start losing yourself. If you start dumbing down now, you're going to keep dumbing down. 
God ain't called you to that. God wants to use you as you are, personality and all. So with that being said, guys, we're going to go into the message. The message that we have this morning is called the power of I am. So I want to take you over to the scriptures and we're not going to be long this morning. I want to take you over to Amos 3 and 3. And it reads, can two walk together except they be agreed? And so last week's message, we talked about tears on bricks and we talked about the comparison between a name and a label. And so the one thing that I want to address this morning, guys, is this, that you have to be in agreement with the name. You have to be agreement with the name. So I'm going to give the definition like I did last week. What is a name? A name is a set of words by which a person is known, addressed, or referred to. And I'm going to give you the definition for a label. What is a label? A label is a classifying phrase or name applied to a person or thing, especially that is inaccurate, one that is inaccurate or restrictive. So I'm going to say that again. A label is a classifying phrase or name applied to a person or thing, especially, hear this part, especially one that is inaccurate or restrictive. So the question that I want to bring to you this morning is this, is that are you agreement? Are you in agreement with the name or are you in agreement with the label? Because God has called us to be in agreement with the name. God has called us to be in agreement with him. And the one thing that I want you guys to understand and know is this, is that when you are in agreement with God, everything begins to open up to you. When you are in agreement with God, when you are in agreement with him, you can be in agreement with yourself. Because the one thing that I love about God is this, is that when you begin to see yourself in God, you will begin to see that all the promises of God are yes and amen, and that you have to get in agreement with those promises. So let's go down here. And the one thing that you don't want, don't be in agreement with the label because people, man, they will label you from the past. They will always label you from things that are not even true. And that's the God knows truth. We see this now. We see this now that that scandal, that controversy, those things be, bring labels. But the one thing that I want you to know is this, that even though there may be controversy, that even though there may be, you know, false narratives, that God's word is truth. And where there is truth, there is life. Where there is truth, there is light and there is freedom. So let's go down here to Genesis chapter three. Verse 14 to 16. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, I am have sent me unto you. So that's the name of God. When, when, when God got before, when Moses got before God, God began to declare his name. His name is I am. And, and I'm going to go back to what I said. What is a name? A name is a set of words by which a person is known, addressed, or referred to. So God is telling Moses, tell them that I am. Going back to the scripture. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. So God told Moses his name and he also told him, hey, this is what you tell the children of Israel. I am have sent me unto you. And God said, moreover unto Moses, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, the Lord, your God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever and this is my memorial unto all generations so god's name is i am and so you know that's the one thing that we as people got to get in agreement with what is the name of god the name of god is i am what is i am i am is everything that is in that bible 
I am is every possibility that could work out for you. I am is the power of healing. I am is the power of deliverance. I am is the power to walk out the truth that God has called you to walk out, to be that truth, to be that miracle. That is who I am is. And so the one thing you got to understand and know is that when you are in agreement with the power of I am, there is deliverance. There is not only deliverance for you, but there is deliverance for your generation. There is deliverance for your community. There is deliverance for our people. Because the one thing that I want you to realize and understand what this ministry is about, what I am about, we are about freedom. Freedom in every aspect. Freedom in every aspect of your life. Freedom in every aspect of the generation that is going to come behind you. Because not only is it about you, but it is about the generations that are going to come behind you. And you have to understand and know that people live by stories, that people live by testimonies, that people live by by witness. When you see the power of witness, you hear the power of testimony. And that's the God knows truth. And the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Because you got to understand is this, is that when you come into agreement with God and that your, your life begins to line up. And you begin to see the power of God in your life. You will also see that you have a testimony. Those testimonies turn into stories. You know, those stories are then handed down. And, and I'm going to give you an illustration. You begin to believe God. God began to open up doors. God began to transform your life. And your children saw that. And so your children will begin to see. I saw how God transformed my father's life, or I saw how God delivered my mom, or I saw how God saved this, or, or how God delivered that, and how God restored this. And I saw that with my parents, or I saw that with my aunt, or I saw that with my brother. That is the power of testimony. That is the power of agreement, because when you come in agreement, you can have those things. So let's go down here, because the one thing that I want you to see is this, is that God heard the people. God heard the cries of Israel and he sent a deliverer unto them to declare his name, to declare what he was going to do. And so the one thing that you got to know is this, is that when God declares what he's going to do, oh, it's going to be done. Because here it is, my word shall go forth. It shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please. And it will prosper in the thing that I've sent it to. Genesis 14, verses 2 to 3. Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp at uh, Firehouth and between Migdal and the sea over against Belzephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. And here, here's the part I want you to see is this. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them up. So here we go, man, with the entanglement. I'm telling you, it was entanglement back then. It's entanglement now. <laughs> so the one thing, man, that, that, you know, Pharaoh was saying, man, look, they all tied up in the land of the wilderness. They're going to be shut up. And so how many times, let me ask you this. How many times have you guys ever, ever felt like Michael Corleone? Seriously. Have you ever felt like Michael Corleone? And here's what he said. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Seriously, how many How many of you have ever thought that, okay, I'm trying to get out of this. I'm trying to get out of a place where, where, where I was bound. I'm trying to get past the labels because I understand that God has called me for newness. I understand the fact that God has called me to a place of agreement with him. But here it is, labels from my past, the spirit of the past, things and natures of the past are trying to entangle me. And every time it seems like I get out, it tries to pull me back in. How many of you have felt like that? Seriously, how many of you have felt like that? I ain't gonna lie, I know I have. Let me ask you this. Who has spoken against your life to curse your life? Has, has anyone ever said you, you will never come out? Has, there, has anyone ever said that, you know, don't nobody want you except me? Has anybody ever said that over you? Have anybody said you just like your father, you just like your mother, 
Have anybody ever spoken words? Have you ever been in a relationship that was, it seemed like it was loyal, but it never added anything to you? Because there is definitely a difference between a person that is faithful and a person that is loyal. Because just because you're around don't mean you add anything to the, you know, to the relationship. You can drain it and still be loyal. You can, you can abuse it and still be loyal. Because sometimes people are only loyal to the use that they get out of you. And then once they ain't got no use of you, then they throw you away. So you definitely got to have discernment between what is faithful. What is faithful will add to you. What is loyal sometimes, if it ain't adding, it's attracting. And there's definitely a difference between faithfulness and loyalty. So getting back to the questions, has anyone ever said that, you know, you nobody, don't nobody want you except me? I ain't going to lie. These are the questions. Has, every, has anyone ever used, you know, your color? You black. You know, you, 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 your mom was a crackhead. You a woman, you this, you that, to speak against you. Because these are the entanglements of life. But the one thing I want to declare to you is that when you get in the power of agreement with the name, when you get in the pow power of agreement with I am, you can break these labels. You don't have to be bound by the restriction. You don't have to allow people to set the tone or give you permission. No, I am gave you permission. And I'm going to tell you this. If, if it means that you have to seek a person's permission, you ain't ready for it. Because if God said, yeah, hey, you go ahead, do that because doors are going to open for you. I'm going to tell you this. Don't allow people to put you in a box. Don't allow people to put you in a, a glass ceiling. You, you break everything and you go where God has called you to go. And don't allow labels to restrict you. You go with the name, the name that God has called you, the name of I am, because I am is the key that unlocks everything. Last question. Have you ever agreed with any of those questions because of failure? Because I'm going to tell you this. There are times, man, where the echoes of the past begin to ring out when we have failures in our lives. You know, maybe I am that because I messed up. But I'm here to declare to you right now that no matter what your mess up may be, God is still saying, I am. I am he that can restore. I am he that can, can, can put you in a place, in a position that I can bring you out. So I want to continue. Genesis chapter 14. Starting at verse four, because I just gave you verse three. And I just want to set up the narrative for this, because when God sent Moses to the children of Israel, the children of Israel, they were in bondage. And so we're going to talk about that because you got to understand and know that when bondage is there, not only is there was there physical bondage, but there was mental bondage. And there are those right now who are experienced mental bondage. You may not be in a physical bondage. But you are definitely dealing with a mental bondage, not like the type with the children of Israel being enslaved, but the mental bondage of the past, the mental bondages of the labels. Because I'm going to tell you right now, even even when you deal with our community as a people of black people, you know, there there is a bondage. There's a bondage of, of the label because they will have you think that, you know. Communities of color need to be policed this way. Communities of color need to be governed a certain way. Communities of color, you know, don't have the right. And then when you start, you know, protesting, then there is a problem. And then the crazy thing about it is that with these la labels, you know, comes the smear campaigns. Because I'm not going to lie, I just did an interview with, uh, with the Black Hebrews. And this is my first rabbit. I did an interview the other day with the Black Hebrews. And the one thing that we talked about in the interview is why are they labeled as terrorists? And so the one thing I want you to realize is this, is that if you look at the history of America, the people that they label terrorists sometimes <laughs> are not the ones that are committing atrocities on American soil because I'm like, who has the guns? Who's been shooting up schools? Has it been the black Hebrews? No. Has it been Black Lives Matter? No, it hasn't. But these are the labels, and this is what I mean when they say inaccurate and restrictive. But, you know, when you start speaking truth, when you start getting to a place where, hey, I'm not going to be bought. You just can't silence my voice by, by throwing me some cash. I'm not going to go away. Then they start to label you a terrorist. 
when you begin to go into the community, when you begin to speak up against the injustice. So that's the difference. And that's the thing that I want you guys to understand, to see and to know. And that we are about truth. And we are about life. And we are about faith and activism. And that's the God knows truth. So let's go back. Done with the rabbit. Um, going back to, to, to the narrative of this story is that you have to understand where the children of Israel were. They were in bondage. And so God was coming to deliver his people. But in order for people to be delivered, the people have to understand and know who is the deliverer. And the deliverer was I am their God, the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And so Moses came, you know, bringing representation, bringing that name that represented what he was and what he was going to do for them. Because the one thing about it is that God has heard their cry. And the one thing about the children of Israel is that they were labeled just like you were labeled. And the one thing about the children of Israel is that they were entangled like some of you were entangled. And, and, and they had doubts, too, just like you may be having doubts. But the one thing that I'm here to tell you today is that God has come to bring you out. God has come with a message of deliverance to bring you out. And that message is his name. His name represents whatever possibility of life that you can believe. He is I am. And if I am is deliverance, that is for you. If I am is healing, that is for you. If I am is for restoration, that is for you. Because anything that is outside of I am is not God. I'm telling you that. Anything that is outside of that ain't worth having. If, 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 if I can't be free, it's not worth having. If it's not life, it's not worth having. If it's not deliverance, if it's not truth, it is not worth having. Because trust and believe, they'll, they'll try to give you everything but that. Just like what we're seeing right now. I love the gestures. Going on a second rabbit. I love the gestures. I love the morals. You know, Black Lives Matter painted all over the place. I love the fact that you putting up flags and, that, and everything like that. But we need policy. We as black people need policy. And like I said before, the, the, the church represents the conduit to the community. Whatever comes through the church goes into the community just like the White House. The church is the first conduit. The, the White House is the second conduit. Because I look at it like this. If, if God can give us a word and a revelation, then we can be free. So let's go to the scripture. I've said enough. Genesis 14, starting at verse 4, and we're going to go to 14. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. Talking about the children of Israel. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So here's the thing. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, but the Lord told Moses that he's going to honor himself. that He's going to show himself unto Pharaoh. And to all his hosts. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? So you got to understand and see and know that the children of Israel, God had performed. They were coming out. And so this is what happens when they came out. And that's just like what I told you every time. I think that I'm out. They try to pull me back in because there are situations where God is going to deliver you, that God is beginning to turn things around for, for, for your good. But there are circumstances, situations, spirits, negativity of the past that wants to pull you back, pull you back into a familiar space, pull you back into a familiar relationship. But I'm here to tell you is that God is going to show himself and he is going to deliver you. And that's the God knows truth. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? Seriously, yeah, man, yo, some people just don't want to let you go. Some of them devils don't want to let you go because they realize that you are breaking up the network, that you are breaking the generational chain, that you are breaking the generational curse. 
and they don't want to let it go because they've been there so long giving expression in your life. You know, exemplifying and manifesting the label, the restriction, the inaccuracy, the thing that is not true. Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. See, that's what I mean. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Israel. I mean, uh, not Israel, chariots of Egypt and captains over one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart. Hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camping by the sea besides Pharaoh before Belzephon. So here it is. The children of Israel went out with a high hand and went out with high hopes. But here it is. Here comes Egypt. Here comes the past. So let me ask you this. What's been chasing you? You done went out, but now it seems like here it is. Yo, oh my God, here they come. Here it is. Here's a reminder. And here it comes. And the crazy part about it is that it comes to try to put that label back on you. It comes at times to try to make you believe that you don't have a name, that, that God is not with you. Because the one thing that I told you in last week's message is that God has given you a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. I told you that. And so the one thing that when God gives you a name, it is represented of who he is. And so if God is giving you a new name, that name represents everything that he is, everything that he's going to do, everything that he's going to be, present, past, and future in your life. And that's the God knows truth. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. And so there comes a time in life where here it is, you're out. But then it seems like the reminders and the ghosts of the past come and it actually makes you afraid. Afraid am I going to go back into bondage? Afraid am I going to experience what I experienced before? And then those questions begin to rise up. Those questions, you know, maybe, may, 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 maybe I am that. You know, maybe, you know, maybe I can't do that. Maybe it is true what they said about me. But I'm here to tell you right now, it is not what God has said. It's what people have said. God has called you to be free. God has called you to be his son. God has called you to be his daughter and to be free. Going back into the scriptures. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Because I ain't gonna lie, man. Sometimes we get to the place where we begin to question God. Like, God, look, you know, did you bring me out here to kill me? I mean, did you deliver me? And now here, here it is. I experienced a little bit of freedom. And now here comes this mess. Here comes the goats. Here comes people from my past. Did you bring me out here to embarrass me? Did you bring me out here to kill me? What is going on? I'm serious. I've asked those questions. But the one thing you have to realize is this, is that when God is working on your behalf, it may look like the enemy is coming up to get you. And it may look like that you may die. But the one thing you got to realize is this, is that in him was life. <laughs> so no matter what people may say, no matter what people may do, there will always be life. They could try to kill you. You just going to come back. I love what Denzel Washington said. Fall down seven times, get up eight. That's the one thing that I love about God is that he will not utterly leave us. And that's the one thing that you got to understand and know good people of God this morning. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word? That we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone. So see, you know, you got to understand that when you are 
coming out or even if God is using you to try to help people, you got to understand is this, if God is using you to help people, I'm explain this to you right fast, that, and this is my last rabbit run, that you have to see the eyes of the oppressed, that you have to see that sometimes people can get used to bondage, that people can get used to things that are dysfunction. Some of you have gotten used to dysfunction and dysfunction has become your new normal. And that's the God knows truth. And, and the crazy part about it is that if you have a broken bone and you allow that broken bone to not heal in the right way, it is healed, but it but it but it didn't set right. Sometimes you have to re-break the bone, reset it so that it can be formed the right way. And a lot of times people don't like the breaking. And a lot of times people complain. And so when people are complaining about, hey, did you, you know, bring us out here to die? They complain against God. They complain against God's man. Did you bring us out here to die? No. God is bringing you out to live. But a lot of times, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's fearful because when all you have known is bondage, when freedom begins to reveal itself, sometimes it can be glaring. Sometimes it can be shocking. Sometimes it can be in a place where it's like, I don't know, man, but I'm here to tell you, man, go with God. Be in the agreement. Because the one thing is this, the Bible, going back to the scripture that I read, how can two walk together except they be agreed? You have to agree with freedom. You have to agree with God for your freedom. You have to agree with the power and the spirit of deliverance for your freedom. And that's the God knows truth. So, you know, getting back into what I was saying is that a lot of times people have problems and they complain. But I'm here to tell you right now, all that is, is the fear of speaking. All that is, is the negativity and, 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 and the spirit of bondage speaking. Because that's all you heard. That's all you know. So yeah, you're going to repeat it. You're going to question it. But I'm here to tell you is that God can take it. Even with the complaints that we give God, he can take it. Even when we accuse God, he can take it because he knows. He knows our chains. He knows our bondage. He knows your tears. He knows your fears. But the one thing that I love about God is this. And Jesus said this, that whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. And whom the son is made free is free indeed. So let's go back into the story. Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And that's fear talking. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. So I'm here to declare to you right now is that God is going to fight for you and that the ghost that you saw, the ghost that you may be seeing today, you're not going to see them any longer because here it is. I am has come to deliver you. I am has come to get you in agreement with him so that you can be delivered, so that you can be healed, so that you can be restored. Because here it is. When I am is saying, hey, I'm going to deliver you. That is a promise. So I am means deliverance. I am means healing. I am means salvation. And if it means all of that, that means that I come into agreement with that so I can walk with that, so I can run with that, so I can be that. How can two walk together except they be agreed? You have to be in agreement with I am because in order for you to be in agreement with I am, just say yes. Just believe. Just like you got born again. Just like you can be born again today. Just say yes. Going back to that flower tree song. All you got to do is say yes. Yes. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> yeah, I said it. The power of deliverance lies in the power of agreement with God, who is your I am. So I want you to understand and know is this, is that it doesn't matter what the chains are. You have the power of I am to be delivered. You have the power of God 
that he will break that chain, that he will destroy the yoke, that he will set you free, he will make you free. And it is the truth that you declare. It is the truth that you embrace. It is the truth that you walk in. And I'm going to say it again. The power of deliverance lies in the power of agreement with God who is your I am. And I'm going to go back to what I read to you in Amos 3.3. And I've been repeating it throughout this uh, message. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And so when you agree with God, when you agree with the word, you have the power of the word. You have the power of God and you can walk with God. And he will lead you and he will guide you into all the truth. So I want to land the message right here. John 17, verse 21, part A, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us. So I want you guys to understand and know is this, is that, you know, God has called us for such a time as this. God has called us to, to, to live a life that is in him, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That is the power of agreement. That is the power of God upon you. That is the power of God within you, in and upon. And so when you have the power of I am, you have the power of possibility. Going in the Old Testament, let the weak say, I am strong. That is God. When you begin to declare of yourself, I am delivered, I am healed. That is God. And I love the fact how Jesus gave us examples, be it unto thee according to thy faith. So you have to begin to declare the power of I am in your life. Begin, begin to declare, I am strong. Begin to declare, I am prosperous. Begin to declare, I am healed. I am whole. I am free. Begin to declare it. Because the Bible says in the book of Job that thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established unto thee. Then the light shall shine upon thy way. You are the prophet of your life. Begin to declare what I am has said over you and about you. Get in agreement with that. Because when you are in agreement with that word, it makes you perfect. It makes you mature. And when you see the example of Jesus, going back to John, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That is the power of ultimate agreement. That is the power of I am because I am allows you to walk in that agreement. And when you walk in that agreement, you have the power of that agreement. You have the power of the one that you agree with. And so whether that is negative, whether that is positive, you will always have that. So I'm going to tell you this. Agree with that which is positive. Agree with that which is God. Because if you start agreeing with sickness and disease, you're going to have sickness and disease. If you start agreeing with the words of the past, you're going to have the bondages of the past. If you're going to start agreeing with what is being said over the news media concerning our community, you're going to begin to resemble that and believe that. And those are the labels. Those are the inaccuracies and restrictions that are put upon us. But God is saying this morning that he wants to free you, just like he freed the children of Israel. And he is telling you this morning, he is telling me to tell you, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And when you stand with the power of agreement, you, you can walk. You have power because God is going to fight for you. And you hold your peace because, yes, scandal's going to come. Controversy is going to come. They're going to call you. They're going to call me. They're going to call all of us all kinds of stuff. They're going to call us false prophets. They're going to call us heretics. They're going to say all types of stuff about us. They're going to say all types of stuff about this church. And I'm, and I'm cool with that because at the end of the day, it's about doing and being what God has called us to be. Children of God. You know, and they're going to say, man, he just about the money. Oh, he, you know. He about, you know, about the LGBTQ plus. I can't be down with him. You know what? Cool. Fine. I ain't got no problem with that because I look at it like this. I'm not called to everybody. 
But at this point right now, I will say this is that God has called us to this community. God has called us to be with our brothers and sisters. God has called us. Doesn't matter what orientation you are. What, what, what matters is, are you a part of the community? Are you in a marginalized community? Because if you are in a marginalized community, God has called us for freedom. God has called us to be healed as a people, collectively and individually. So, yeah, the labels are going to come. But the one thing that I love is that God has given us a name and he has given us that name of I am. So my question is, <laughs> what are you going to call yourself? What are you going to say after I am? Because we are in him. Are you going to say I am prosperous? Are you going to say I am healed? Are you going to say I am free? Are you going to say I have peace? I am peace. I am joy. I am prosperous. I am lovely. I am wonderful. Say that about yourself. And when you begin to say that about yourself, you will begin to see the freedom and the power that is in that. Because God has given you the power of I am. And God wants you to be free. God wants you to experience life like you never knew it before. And it's not about going to heaven right now. It's about having heaven here on earth. And so, hey, whew. let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this time in the word. I thank you, Father, Lord God, that you are revealing yourself to your people this morning. I thank you, Father, Lord God, that no matter what, that you have called us by your name that you have called us in agreement, that you've called us, Lord God, to experience you as I am, to see the power of I am, that the people will begin to, begin to see the power of I am in themselves, that they will know and understand that everything that you have promised them, that the illustrations of the Bible are not only symbolism, but they are life. And so, Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the people. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for this church. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, if you want to get born again, if you need to be saved, if you want to allow Jesus to come into your life, if you need newness, if you need that right now, I, I, I want to pray with you. And I'm here to declare to you right now, I see chains being broken. In the name of Jesus, I see windows of opportunity being open for you. And I also see in the name of Jesus, there are certain doors. Some of you right now, in the name of Jesus, that there are doors that are closing, doors of negativity, doors of the past, because the Lord is showing me right now that God is opening up new doors, but he is also closing doors, closing doors of bad relationships, closing doors of negativity, closing doors of poverty, because God is giving you witty inventions. He's giving you innovation and ideas. And I want you guys to understand and know that if God is showing me this and he's telling me to tell you this, that this is a prophetic moment for you. Execute in that moment. Embrace that moment and know that God is for you. And the power of I am and the power of prophecy can begin to change and transform your life. And that's the God knows truth. So I want you guys to understand and know, you know, we, we, we ain't joking with this. That's the God knows truth. We are not joking with this and that this is real, that this is God. And if God is breaking chains, if God is opening up windows, if God is opening and closing doors, it is your time and it is your season. So I'm declaring to you right now, walk in that truth, walk in that prophecy, embrace it and allow God to show you the ins and the outs. So I want to pray the prayer of salvation. If you are in need of salvation, if you are a person who is looking, say, hey, brother Leon, you know, Pastor Leon, hey, I want I want to experience everything that you've been talking about. I want to know God as I am. I want to be able to 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 break the label, to, to remove the label and have a new name. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to say this. Father, Lord God, I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my savior. And I give myself to you. I, I bow my knee before you. And I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life. 
I confess my sin to you and I ask that you wash me, that you make me clean, that you will restore me, that you will heal me, and that you will receive me as your own. And I choose to believe this day in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I just want you, hey man, just get yourself into a local church. You can join this body. We're an online body. We're an online ministry. And so, you know, if you want to link up with us, you can link up with us on Facebook. You can link up with us. Um, we, we have prayer room. We did prayer room last week. We're going to be doing it next week. We're going to be going into the prayer room. But if you want to be a part of the ministry, if you want to be a part of you know, this movement where faith and activism meet. I want you guys, man, just, you know, come on. Because the Bible says that that whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. That's what God is doing. That is what we are saying. And we want you to experience. We want you to experience God in fullness with this fellowship and with this church. So with that being said, guys, um, we're going to be doing Bible study on Thursdays. So the Bible study will be on the podcast. Again, like I said in the beginning of the message, I want you guys to go to the podcast. So if you miss this message, this message will be put on the podcast uh, probably later on today and everything right now. So um, later on today, definitely Thursday. Man, yo, you got to hear the podcast music, the intro music. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, that thing is banging. I'm thinking, man, sh I, I, I hung up my rap stuff a long time ago, but... <laughs> I'm thinking, man, I might come out of retirement with that beat. So um, I'm telling you, man, this is God is opening up doors. And I am proud, man, to say, man, that, that things are happening. And I just want to say thank you. It's been a pleasure to be before you today. So, hey, guys, this is uh, Pastor Leon. And I just want to say, hey, man, you guys have a blessed day. It's been a pleasure. And walk in your truth. Peace. And life, you have freedom. Follow Truth and Life Urban Ministry on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Like, share, and subscribe to Truth and Life Urban Ministry.